joining us online to learn more about phase two of planning the upper lands. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Squamish Nation, Tsleil-Waututh Nation, and Musqueam Nation. We recognize and respect them as nations in this territory, as well as their historic connection to the lands and waters around us since time immemorial. Before I begin, I'd like to review the meeting guidelines. Uh, the first half of the Q&A session will focus on typed questions. The second half of the Q&A will switch to audio questions for, for those that prefer to voice their questions. Please speak slowly and clearly. If you've asked a question or shared a comment, ensure that new voices are heard before you contribute again. There will be zero tolerance for disrespectful behavior, be it through the Q&A or audio functions. Anyone who is uncivil towards others will be removed by staff. If you have follow-up questions after the session, please email upperlands at westvancouver.ca. Information <clears throat> materials are available online at westvancouverite slash upperlands. Today's meeting agenda includes a 30-minute presentation followed by a question and answer period where the presenter will answer your questions. For typed questions, click the Q&A button and type your question. Please ensure that you send your message to all panelists, which is the default option. The presenter will respond, will answer verbally. For voiced questions, we'll enable your microphones for the second half of the Q&A. To ask a question during the audio portion, click the raise hand icon on the participants tab on the right hand corner of your screen. Or if you're unable to find that raise hand icon, type into the Q&A that you wish to speak. I will now pass the microphone to our presenter. I'll stop sharing my screen here. Thanks very much, Anya. Um, before I introduce um, Nicole Olenek, I'll just provide a few introductory remarks. Um, and just, first of all, just thanks to everybody uh, for joining us tonight. Really appreciate you taking the time of your busy schedules to, to spend some time to learn more and to participate in this process. Um, you know, part of this upper lands work is really building on the vision that's already outlined in the district's official community plan, uh, the 2018-2018 community plan. And we've been undertaking a planning and community engagement process to create detailed policy for a new compact, sustainable urban community in Cypress Village, as well as um, protecting a large portion of the Eagle Ridge lands in perpetuity for conservation and recreation. Um, this fall, the phase two of our upper lands program, it presents the phase two program presents a, a proposed land use plan and development concept for Cypress Village. Uh, it's consistent with the, the council approved official community plan, as well as a lot of the direction that we heard from folks in phase one. So we really, it's, it's an iterative process and, and phase two is very much built on, of course, the foundation of the OCP and all of the, the things that we heard from folks in phase one. Um, I'd really like to encourage folks to go to our web page. Um, there are a number of really important backgrounders and documents on the web page and they're they're posted online and they provide a lot of detailed information about the the aforementioned uh, land use plan that will make a portion of the environmental development or sorry the the area development plan for Cypress Village. Um, the phase two materials will be inputs into developing the area development plan and a zoning bylaw for Cypress Village in phase three, which is the next phase, which will then present to council um, for formal consideration for adoption as part of our OCP. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole. Um, but one, one more thing, I guess, is as, in addition to these virtual meetings, we also have a survey that's up online. Um, it will be open until Monday, October the 4th. Please go to the web page, take the survey. In addition to this, that I think it's really, we want to hear from you, so please go in and fill in the survey. Um, I think that covers it as an intro. I'm looking forward to answering questions with Nicole at the end, but now I'll turn it over to Nicole for the, the presentation. Thanks very much, Jim. I'm going to share my screen here. Is that showing on the screen? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, as Anya and Jim mentioned, thank you for joining us for this virtual information meeting about planning the upper lands, creating a sustainable urban community in Cypress Village, and protecting lands in Eagle Ridge. 
Uh, in our presentation tonight, we'll walk through a bit of the background about the policy context and goals for this planning and engagement process. Jim touched on them, but I'll just reiterate a few points. Um, we'll also provide an overview about the concept planning work that we've been doing in phase two, give you some information about the phase two survey that Jim also mentioned that's online on our project website um, and talk about next steps. So to start with the policy context, there are four remaining planning areas um, in the upper lens that have not yet been developed. So there's Eagle Ridge, Inter Creek, Cypress West, and Cypress Village. The long-term vision that Jim mentioned that's already contained in the 2018 official community plan is to protect the lands that are in Eagle Ridge and Inter Creek in their natural state for recreation and conservation. And then to create new compact, complete, sustainable communities in Cypress West and Cypress Village. This vision that's in the 2018 OCP builds upon work that was completed a few years before that um, in 2015 by the citizen led upper lands working group who really looked at the remaining upper lands in a holistic way. So the OCP anticipates achieving this vision by transferring the development potential from the lands in Eagle Ridge and Inter Creek into the new neighborhoods in Cypress West and Cypress Village. Most of the lands in these four planning areas are owned by British Pacific Properties Limited. I'm going to refer to them as BPP as I go forward. Um, and those privately owned lands are all currently zoned to allow for estate-sized single family houses. So when we talk about transferring the development potential, we mean that the lands in Eagle Ridge and Inter Creek would no longer be able to be developed under the existing zoning with, with single family housing or any form of development for that matter. Um, these lands would be retained for recreation and conservation purposes. And then additional residential development would be included in the new neighborhoods in Cypress West and Cypress Village to facilitate that protection of lands in these two areas. Over the long term, this will protect a very large area for natural in a natural state for recreation and conservation. It'll also help um, limit suburban sprawl, and it'll concentrate development in a way that's more compact and sustainable. So our process um, is currently focusing on two of those four planning areas, Eagle Ridge and Cypress Village. This map uses cross-hatching to show the lands that are owned by BPP in the Eagle Ridge planning area and in the Cypress Village planning area. And ultimately, our process has two goals. The first goal is to protect these lands for conservation and recreation purposes. And then the second goal is to create a compact, sustainable urban community in Cypress Village that would have transit, a mix of housing, community facilities, and shops and services that would serve the residents who live here, also the residents in Rogers Creek neighborhood, which is adjacent to the Cypress Village planning area um, and is currently being developed, and really residents of the upper lands. I mentioned that our planning process has um, a few phases and phase one, uh, as you mentioned, focused on communicating the goals and the vision that are already outlined in the OCP. And we collected community input about the share of the Eagle Ridge lands owned by BPP that should be protected at this time in this planning process. And the trade-off being the greater the share of the lands being protected now, then the greater the scale of the development um, that's required in Cypress Village to enable that protection. The community and the stakeholder feedback that we got in phase one favored protecting all of the Eagle Ridge lands owned by BPP at this time, rather than in a phased approach. And then planning for a scale of Cypress Village that will help enable that protection. So at the end of phase one, um, we got council direction to um, base the phase two planning work on full protection of Eagle Ridge in exchange for a target of about 3,500 housing units in Cypress Village. So we're now in phase two. Um, and the planning work in phase two has been based on that direction from phase one. In phase two, as Jim mentioned, we are presenting a proposed land use plan and development concept for Cypress Village. And then following this phase, um, we'll be producing a proposed area development plan for Cypress Village and supporting bylaws, including a zoning bylaw and a phase development agreement. And then we'll be presenting those to West Bands Council for formal consideration um, and for the area development plan to be adopted as part of the OCP. So this map just zooms into um, the Cypress Village planning area, just to give you a bit more of the local context. This is the upper levels highway. 
Um, this is Cypress Bowl Road, the current exit that comes off of the highway and um, snakes up the mountain. So the first switchback is really where the Cypress Village planning area is um, centered upon. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Rogers Creek neighborhood, which is under development by BPP, is, is to the east. And then Cypress Falls Park um, and Cypress Falls Estates um, are sort of landmarks to the west. The upper boundary, which is this red line, is the 1200 foot contour, and that's a bit of a boundary outlined in, in the OCP. Jim referred to um, a series of documents that we have on the web page, and this is just a quick list um, to, to touch on what those are. So as part of the phase two materials, um, there's 12 documents that we've put up on the web page. One is an overview of phase two, which is a quick summary, and the other 11 um, are more detailed documents that kind of delve into several different topics that are part of the planning work um, for Cypress Village. So um, there's information in each of those about the proposed housing mix, uh, concept planning, transit and active transportation and recreation area planning, community facilities proposed for Cypress Village, the proposed form and character of development for the village, a servicing strategy, uh, the results of some technical work that's been done looking at the preliminary impact of um, traffic from the village, anticipated phasing of development, and also a document about the approach um, that we're proposing for protecting the lands in Eagle Ridge. In the presentation, I'm going to walk through some highlights of these materials, um, but anyone interested is welcome to dive, dive deeper um, by looking at the documents on the web page and learning more. So this table um, shows the total proposed size of the community and the proposed housing mix. As part of the phase two planning work, a total of 3,700 housing units is being proposed for Cypress Village. This is slightly higher than the 3,500 units that we referred to in the phase one materials. And the difference reflects the desire to include some affordable purpose-built rental housing as part of the village. Uh, this, size of, oops, go back. this size of community will help enable the protection of all of the BPP lands in Eagle Ridge. Um, and it'll mean that the village will be large enough to support a vibrant commercial core with amenities and transit service. It's a large enough number that there can be a mix of housing types included and that there can be some rental and affordable housing included. When you look at the breakdown of the mix, you'll see that almost all of the housing is proposed to be multifamily units and that will help achieve a compact, sustainable community that's transit oriented um, and supports walking and cycling for many of the, the daily um, trips within the village. There is a small number of single family dwellings included in the plan. Um, these will be in the range of about 2,500 to 3,500 square feet in size, which is much smaller than the estate size single family houses that are typically found in the upper lands and that would be allowed under the existing zoning. So with 3,700 housing units, um, the next slide here presents what that would look like in terms of population number. So we anticipate that there will be about 6,900 people living in Cypress Village once it is fully developed. The village is expected to be built over about 20 to 25 years and growth will probably be a bit slower at the start and then gain some momentum over time. So in terms of population points over time, um, in 2025, we expect that about 200 people will live in Cypress Village. And then by 2030, um, we anticipate that about 1,700 people will reside in Cypress Village. And then in 2045, about 20 to 25 years from now, um, when it's fully built out, that'll, that'll be when um, the village reaches its build out population of about 6,900 people. The next set of slides walk through some concept plans for Cypress Village. So this first image, shows the intention to protect the lands in Eagle Ridge um, in a natural state and also to cluster development in Cypress Village so that some lands in Cypress Village are also um, retained in a natural state for conservation and recreation. So the green shaded areas are the natural areas and, and the yellow shaded areas um, are where development will be clustered. This is a more close up version of, of essentially the same information. Um, so, in terms of creating a plan like this, um, we took into consideration terrain, environmental features, and smart growth principles to try to cluster development 
in locations within the planning area and then leave some areas that will be natural for recreation and conservation. Those are the unshaded areas that you can see within the planning area. One of the overall planning principles for Cypress Village is to be sensitive to environmental impact and to try to avoid development in aquatic and riparian areas as much as possible so that we leave most of those types of areas undisturbed. Um, however, in order to achieve a compact, high density, sustainable village and to achieve the full protection of the lands in Cypress Village, there are some relatively small areas where there will be some aquatic features in riparian areas um, that might have impacts. Those will require compensation through the construction of new and improved habitat. The requirement being that um, the functionality and the value of habitat needs to be equal to or greater than the existing conditions. This approach to the environmental, um, this environmental approach, I should say, requires approval of the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and that process is underway. So any feedback that we get from DFO will be incorporated into the planning work um, as we move along. This next image shows the proposed road network in Cypress Village. Um, if you think about it from a macro level, uh, there will be vehicular access off of the upper level of highway, um, off of the existing interchange with Cypress Bowl Road. There will be some upgrades to that interchange, but that's one of the main access points into the village. And a second main access point is through the Rogers Creek area here, um, where there's the intersection of Chippendale Road and Cypress Bowl Road. So traffic can come into the neighborhood from, from those locations. Eventually, there will also be a connection once Cypress West gets developed um, with a new a new road connection um, through to Northwood Drive and over to Cypress Falls Estates. But for the foreseeable future, this will remain just an emergency access route. But one day we'll provide a third, a third access um, in and out of the village. And then if we think a little bit more locally about once you're on Cypress Bowl Road, how do you get into the village? Um, there's two main sort of more fine grained access points. One will be at this intersection here, which will be reconfigured. Um, and it's the new Westmount connector, which is a road that's proposed to be um, included as part of the village development. So there'll be a roundabout at this location, and it'll be reconfigured in terms of how access to the district works yard on the other side of the street works, and then access into the village. And then there'll be another roundabout here on this road, which is shaded orange, um, called Eagle Lake Road. Eagle Lake Road, the alignment that you see here, fairly closely matches uh, the alignment of, our, of a road that already exists in that location. Eagle Lake Road will be the principal collector road in the village, and then off of that, local roads will access into the development, the development areas. This image presents the proposed land use plan for the village um, when it's fully developed in about 20 to 25 years. So you're seeing all of the development um, showing in the plan. So as you can see in the legend, there are five, four to five main elements here, five main elements. Um, the first is this mixed use village core, which is the red shading and which is concentrated down in this, this part of the planning area. This area will contain um, almost all of the commercial space, including things like restaurants and shops and services. It also has most of the community facilities, which will be located on this site known as McGavin Field. And it'll include um, mixed use buildings. So retail service at grade with multifamily residential above. Um, the buildings are proposed to include a mix of mid rise buildings in the range of four to six stories and also taller buildings in the village core in the range of 15 to 25 stories. Um, the second land use uh, that's shown on the map is um, this orange shaded area and also labeled number two and these are multi-family residential areas um, these are mostly along eagle lake road to help concentrate additional housing that's near the village core there could be opportunities for some retail at grade um, especially right along the edge here with the village core and possibly a coffee shop or um, local corner store uh, dotted throughout the multi-family area um, the, build, the buildings in this area will also include mid-rise mid buildings in the range of five to six stories and taller buildings in the range of 10 to 25 stories. 
And the third land use category are these lower density residential areas. Um, this is, these are the areas that are yellow shaded or, or putty colored. Um, and these will include ground oriented housing. So single family houses, townhouses, and duplexes. They look like they take up a lot of the land area, but that land area is mostly where it's challenging to include multifamily development because of terrain. Fourth, there are employment areas. So there are some existing employment uses in, in the village planning area. Um, the district's works yard is here in shaded blue. There's also the school district's existing works yard and the BC Hydro substation up here. Um, but we're also proposing to include some new employment lands that are made possible by the new West Mount connector here. Um, and those would be suitable for a business park. So uses could be something like office, uh, film studio, craft breweries, um, light manufacturing, but uses that are compatible with a location that are near um, a new mixed use village like this. And then I mentioned already the, the cluster of um, community facilities, which are really proposed to be located on this McGavin Field site, which if you've been there has fairly amazing views. So it's gonna be a pretty um, neat field and location for the school and the community center. The next two plans um, show the proposed active transport network. Um, and I guess when I say active transportation, uh, we mean people who are actively moving about walking, scooting, rollerblading, uh, skateboarding and cycling. The goal in the, um, in the active transportation network is to provide multiple options for people to choose active modes of travel to try and help people avoid uh, making trips in their car when they're within the village. We also wanna provide connections to other areas of West Vancouver. So including Rogers Creek, um, over to the east and the future neighborhood of Cypress West up here to the west, um, Caulfield and the future trail network, um, which is part of, will be part of the upper lands. You can see that the pedestrian network includes some pedestrian only paths, um, as well as some multi-use paths. The plan is to be able to accommodate pedestrians of all ages and abilities and, and to provide choice um, as people move throughout the village. This next plan is similar, but it's the proposed cycling network. The cycling network um, also has some cycling only paths as well as multi-use paths. Uh, the steepest road is really Eagle Lake Road, which is this main arterial I mentioned. So going uphill on Eagle Lake Road, um, cyclists will be separated from vehicular traffic and they'll use a multi-use path so going uphill. Um, it's anticipated that they'll be moving slower than, than cars would be. Um, and going downhill to avoid the steep grades that are on Eagle Lake Road, the principal choice could be, um, and the preferred route really for downhill cyclists will be along this multi-use path. However, it's possible that experienced cyclists could choose to share traffic, um, share the lane with traffic and uh, travel down um, Eagle Lake Road. The goal is also with this network to have options um, and to be able to accommodate users of all ages and abilities. There's also this mountain biking area, which I will highlight in the next plan. And this is the proposed recreation areas plan. Um, so this plan carries forward the, the multi-use paths and the, the dedicated paths for cyc uh, cyclists and pedestrians. And then it also outlines um, that the, the goal of Cypress Village is really to include recreation. So things like hiking, uh, cycling, mountain biking, and bouldering, um, which are some activities that are that do happen uh, in this area now. And then also supporting infrastructure for those kinds of uses. So things like parking, um, trailheads, staging, washrooms, bike wash areas, that kind of thing. Um, this is the proposed mountain biking area, at, which is cross hatched. And then these two areas here shown with the lines um, are proposed bouldering areas. As Part of the planning process that we have underway right now, BPP will commit funding towards developing this mountain, the mountain biking trails in this area, and also funding towards enhancer, enhancing access to the bouldering areas in the village. And then subsequent to this planning process, there will be another district-led process that will involve BPP and um, these recreation groups, the mountain biking community, to help determine the detailed planning and delivery for the mountain biking trails. You'll also see on this plan, we have an initial bike staging location, which is here on McGavin Field. Right now, McGavin Field um, 
has what's called the temporary pop-up village located on it and a, a bike wash and staging area is included in that and, and that's really envisioned for the next 10 years but as part of the process looking at how to plan and deliver the trails um, there'll be work to look at where the, the best location is for a permanent um, bike staging area Um, Cypress Village is being designed as a complete community. So locating community facilities and services in the village helps to achieve several objectives. Um, the first is that it helps to support walking and cycling and that helps to foster healthy lifestyles. And then next, it also helps to reduce vehicular traffic and that in turn helps to reduce pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. And it also is just a way to help meet the day-to-day -day needs of the residents of Cypress Village and Rogers Creek um, and other parts of the upper lands in the neighborhood in which folks are living. So on the screen here, you'll see a list of the proposed community facilities um, that are anticipated to be part of the village. Uh, I'll just read them out. So this includes a community center with a gym, a fitness center, and multi-purpose rooms for things like meetings, classes, social events, and programming, possibly by local organizations, and possibly a branch library. Um, the sports field that I mentioned, the elementary school, child care spaces, which would be provided throughout the village for uh, a fire hall, which would be located on the district's works yard site and local businesses, including the shops and services um, that will help serve residents in the area. One of the other elements being incorporated into the village, which I guess could be considered an amenity on its own, um, is an independent transit service that will be provided by BPT. The independent transit service will connect Cypress Village um, to Park Royal, where there's bus service to Ambleside uh, over the Lionsgate Bridge, east to North Vancouver and over the Second Narrows Bridge. And then within Cypress Village, the service will initially include stops that are in the central hub of the village core. And then as development proceeds, more stops could be added along Eagle Lake Road to help maintain easy walking distance to transit for a large share of, of residents living in the village. I mentioned earlier that Cypress Village will take about 20 to um, 25 years to fully develop. And this image helps to show the anticipating phasing of development. So the first phase, which is outlined in the sort of blue dashed line, will include um, a large part of the mixed use village core and the lower density residential areas that are up here near Rogers Creek. Rogers Creek will also be completing um, at that same time. And the anticipated timeline for this phase will be about 2022 to 2035. The first phase will also involve completion of the paved multi-use path that will connect Rogers Creek and Cypress Village. Um, some of the circulation routes within Cypress Village and BPP will be expected to provide some of the most important space for retailers like grocery stores um, near the beginning of the first phase and also the independent transit service. The second phase, which is this uh, greener small dot line, um, includes the rest of the village core and most of the multifamily area, the orange shaded area along Eagle Lake Road. And then this part of the lower density residential development in um, the southwest part of the planning area. It also includes the employment lands um, south here of the West Mount Connector. That phase is expected to take place between about 2033 and 2040. And then the final phase will include completing the rest of the multifamily area up at the north end of Eagle Lake Road and the remaining um, lower density residential areas um, also up in the northern part of the planning area. The timing for that is likely about 2038 to 2045. Um, next, we wanted to touch on one of the pieces of technical analysis that's been done to help inform the planning work. So there is a preliminary transportation impact analysis that's been there's a document on the project web page that provides um, a more detailed summary of the results of that. Um, and then quickly just to highlight the findings, the transportation analysis found that the traffic impact of Cypress Village on Highway 1, roads in West Vancouver, the Lionsgate Bridge and the Second Narrows Bridge um, is relatively small 
uh, in the context of long-term increases from other sources, which include development elsewhere in the region and increased BC ferries traffic volumes. Um, developing over two decades, obviously this won't be the only project underway uh, and there'll be continued growth in different parts of the region. The analysis also found that no intersections will have noticeable delays related to traffic volumes from Cypress Village um, once it's built out. In large part, this is because the new Westmount Road connector will help provide options for drivers. So it can help distribute and disperse traffic locally. And I found that when Cypress Village is fully developed in about 20 to 25 years, travel times from West Vancouver to other parts of the region will not be materially longer because of Cypress Village. There will be increased travel times um, occurring over the next two decades as growth continues to occur. But the impact that we can isolate um, and, and correlate with, uh, the, with Cypress Village being development is an impact of a less than about two minutes increase in driving time for most trips out of, um, out of Cypress Village. Um, actually, I'm going to go back for one second. So some of these impacts might be um, less than folks may assume. And I guess there's a few reasons for that that I, I should just touch on. So first, um, the impacts will be gradual because the village will be built out over, over two decades. So uh, we're not plunking 3,700 units on day one um, up on the village and, and having to have traffic um, adjust immediately to that. There will also be other changes, as I mentioned, um, that will contribute to the amount of traffic that affects West Vancouver residents. Um, there will be some additional traffic that would have happened if the lands were developed as single family under the existing zoning. So the analysis really looked at how much more traffic would be generated by a mixed use village than by single family development under existing zoning. The trips out of Cypress Village um, will happen throughout the day, so they won't all be um, necessarily happening at the same time. We are purposefully planning Cypress Village to include amenities, including a school, um, employment uses, and retail and service uses, so that residents um, can hopefully reduce trips elsewhere to meet their day to day needs. And there's the independent transit service that I mentioned, which hopefully will also provide options um, that people can choose to use transit rather than necessarily make all trips by driving. Um, the next set of slides helps to illustrate the proposed form and character of development for Cypress Village. Um, so planning for the Cypress Village lands to us represents an incredible opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity to create a unique place that has a strong connection between the urban and natural areas, a strong sense of community, um, create outstanding access to environmental and recreational assets, and to provide a deep commitment to sustainable development. So in, in looking at the proposed form and character for Cypress Village, we really drew upon um, the natural character of the lands the West Vancouver context, but we also looked at some ideas and inspiration from well-regarded examples of master plan communities and other projects throughout the region. There's a document on the project website called um, Proposed Form and Character of Development, and that includes um, a precedence study, and that has several images and examples from around the region um, of successful mixed-use village cores, successful projects that are multifamily residential development in a natural setting, and also information about some of the larger mixed use master plan communities that have happened over the last couple of decades in the region. I'm not gonna go into details about the precedent study um, tonight, but I do wanna highlight five main um, elements, I guess I would say that we found that helped make great places. So in looking at all of those precedents, sort of five themes are um, that successful places help to integrate development within its natural setting. So designing with nature, incorporating open spaces, pathways and trails, and also recreational opportunities helps to reinforce a sense of connection to nature, emphasizing the pedestrian realm and the use of open space design in building a community can help to create social gathering places to bring the community together for connection in daily life, not just at events. Designing streets with a human scale, um, a sense of safety and comfort, and the storefronts that help add vitality and life to the street also helps create a great place. 
and including a diverse range of housing types and using building form and character also helps to create a, a sense of place. So those are just some themes that we saw in other master plan communities and examples that we can draw upon when we're planning for Cypress Village. But now let's turn to looking at what Cypress Village could look like when it's fully developed in about 20 to 25 years. The images on this slide and on the next few slides are artists conceptual illustrations that help show the proposed form and character of development. I would consider these um, conceptual character sketches. They represent ideas and aspirations for the village. This first image on the screen right now shows the entire village upon build out. You'll see that there are taller, the taller buildings that I mentioned when I talked about the different, um, the, the mixed use village and the multifamily residential area along Eagle Lake Road. The taller buildings really help to reduce the footprint of development and help to achieve that objective of having some natural areas um, in, in the planning area. The taller buildings also help to allow for the transfer of development potential from the BPT lands in Eagle Ridge that will facilitate protecting those lands for recreation and conservation. You can see that the planning, the planning work anticipates roughly a dozen taller buildings in Cypress Village. Um, streets and open spaces and the pedestrian realm will all be designed to have a human scale um, and a sense of connection to nature. So while there will be uh, buildings with height in, in the neighborhood on a pedestrian level, um, we're really aiming for something that feels comfortable and easy to move around um, and has a real, really fine grained um, sense of, of the pedestrian realm. These are a couple images that show um, the vision for the mixed use village core um, with retail at grade and residential above. And on this slide, this top um, left image shows an idea for how plazas could be incorporated into the village. The image here on the right um, shows what it could look like. The multifamily residential area could look like along Eagle Lake Road and then what the lower density ground oriented housing um, residential areas could look like. This is my last slide. Um, and so, as Jim mentioned, and I wanted to tell you about as well, we have the phase two survey that's available on the project website. It is seeking community input on the proposed land use plan and development concept for Cypress Village. It's open until Monday, October 4th, and we're, we're hoping to hear feedback and input and ideas and suggestions. So we hope um, people will participate in that. Um, after that, we will be summarizing the results of the survey, summarizing the discussions that we're having at these virtual information meetings. Um, we're also reaching out to stakeholder groups and receiving feedback um, in other ways. And then we plan to report to council on the results of phase two later this fall. And then phase three would follow after that.